My name is Jeff Shara. We are sitting on Little Round Top at Gettysburg. A little over 150 years ago, something extraordinary happened here. Lives were changed, history was changed. But the lessons you get in a history book really don't mean anything unless you can walk this ground and see what happened here through the eyes of the people who actually were here. That's the purpose of historical fiction, to tell you the story, historically accurate, but to put you there, to put you in the heads of the people who did the deed, who preserved this land for us today so that we can learn that history, that we can understand what was fought for here, who died, why, how, what it felt like, what it smelled like. That's the purpose of historical fiction. I love coming to pieces of ground like this, not for the not for the textbook lesson, not for the facts and figures, but to get the feel of what it was like to walk this ground in 1863, when right down, right over this hill, the enemy's coming at you, intent on killing you. That's the kind of feeling you can only get from a novel, and I'm proud to be involved in that. The death of Stonewall Jackson is well chronicled. There were a lot of witnesses there, a lot of people wrote about it. We know that he died at 315 in the afternoon on May 10th, 1863. Um, it was a Sunday. What was going on in that room in the minds of the people? That's my job as the storyteller, to take you with me. What were Jackson's last moments like? Well, of course, the historian can't tell you that. There's no way for us to ever know that. That's the storyteller's job. That's what historical fiction can do, is it can tell you that story. In Gods and Generals, that was the climactic scene in that book for me. Uh, one of the hardest things I've ever done. I was weeping as I wrote it, um, as I had to kill a character I had learned to love. But that's what historical fiction can do. It can make you love the characters. In my own research, I rely on the diaries, the memoirs, the collections of letters, the accounts of the people who were there, or who were here, uh, to get that story. It's one thing to read a history book or a biography, uh, it's quite another to hear the words uh, and to hear as the people recall it themselves, what they went through. That's the source material. It's not just making up stories. Um, fiction can be anything. I had a historian tell me once, you can write anything you want to. You can make up all the stories you want. They don't have to be true. I don't really agree with that. When you're dealing with the Civil War, when you're dealing with characters like Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain on Little Round Top, you'd better get it right. But beyond that, the only way you can tell his story is to get inside his head. That's the great fun for me, whether it's Lee or Grant or Chamberlain or John Reynolds or Pickett and on and on and on. Um, that's what's fun for me, and I think the readers enjoy that as well. It's not just the history lesson, it's the story of who these people were telling their story the way they would tell it. The best illustration I can give you of how historical fiction can bring new people, new eyes, new audience, audiences into this subject matter is classrooms children, school kids, high school kids, who come to me and they say, they, with that look of pain when they think I'm gonna give them a lecture about history, and then they realize, no, it's not about history, it's about storytelling. That telling them about a character that they can relate to, that they can get involved with, suddenly it comes alive for them. I've seen this time and time again, whether it's at Gettysburg or, or around schools around the country, to have students come up to you and say, wow, I didn't know that, I wanna know more. To me, that's the greatest gift a storyteller can give an audience, is to make that audience want to know more.